And uh, great to see you. So you heard Leo's report, uh, you know, the countdown is on. Who's it going to be? I mean, Shapiro's interesting because, and, and intriguing, obviously, Pennsylvania is important. Um, he's, a, he's Jewish. So he's also been very pro-Israel after the attacks on October 7th, which could be a contrast to Harris and her administration and some of, of her, um, I guess, her stances uh, throughout the last couple weeks and month. What's your read on it? What do you think? Well, it's certainly been interesting to watch. First of all, thank you for having me. And as we watch this, I mean, there is the question of will a Shapiro line him, align himself with a Harris who has gone kind of against his values, who has been vocally against his values? Is he willing to give that side of his identity up to go out there and run for vice president? We've heard that there have been some squabbles behind the scenes with other people who have been listed as potential candidates who say, hey, we don't think that she can win at this late date. We don't want to be associated with this. So it's fascinating to kind of watch the behind the scenes. Do they believe in Harris truly? Are they struggling to find that VP? I mean, that's the question that we're all wondering. And it'll be fascinating to find out who it actually is. I think that will give us a little insight into some of those top contenders and whether or not they were willing to put themselves on the line at this late date. Yeah, we, when we talk about Shapiro, he, he canceled some fundraising events, I guess, in the Hamptons. Uh, coming up this weekend. What, do you read anything into that? Um, should we read anything into that? I don't know. I mean, we've heard that Pete Buttigieg has also canceled some events, and and I think that there's maybe some of this going on to throw people off the trail. They're trying to figure things out. I'm sure there are still negotiations going on behind the scenes, and perhaps some of these people are going to be taking their time to sit down with their families, to sit down with Harris, to make a decision. And who knows, is it going to, the question I have, is it actually going to be Kamala Harris's decision, or is she waiting for people to come back and say, hey, yeah, I'm going to actually take this risk with you? Yeah. Yeah. Governor Gretchen Whitmer, you know, she had said that on Monday she'd be sticking with her current job. Um, you're also from Michigan. I mean, we, politicians, we know, say a lot of things. They say they're not interested in the job and then they take it. <laughs> so is that is, do you think she could even still be in the running? Uh, I don't think she is. I think that she's kind of the personality of if I'm not top of the ticket, I don't want to be a part of it. I think that she's been held in that esteem for a very long time, Senate majority leader, uh, governor. In the state of Michigan, she's been held at a higher standard. I don't think she fully understands national politics. I don't think she's ready for it. And I think that if it were up to her, she would be battling for that top seat or nothing. And that's probably why she's no longer in the running for vice president. Yeah. Um Speaking of the president and vice president, last night, as you know, President Biden answered questions from reporters after welcoming back uh, the three Americans uh, released from Russia. I want to I want to play the soundbite, then I want to get your thoughts uh, after. What's your message to the American people? There's nothing beyond our capacity to react together. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't know who the hell we are. We're the United States of America. The United States of America. We put back together relationships with countries we haven't had. We've built NATO. We've built the circumstances that allowed this to happen. That's why it happens. And then you, you see Kamala Harris there as well. Um, we know that now uh, it's been announced that Biden is going to be speaking, I believe, on, on night one uh, of the DNC about three weeks from now. Um, I, I, I'd say, is this the beginning of him kind of passing the torch to her? But But that's really already started, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of my daughters just at breakfast today said to me, so is Kamala Harris actually the president now? And I thought, that's funny. <laughs> Here's a teenager asking me the question that we're all thinking, right? Is she actually? Who is running the country? And what a strange response to such a joyous moment. Obviously, the answer of there's nothing beyond the United States. Well, there are people that are still left in Russia. So I'm sure there are families that are at home going, well, wait a minute, what about my loved one? But also a, a strange reaction to a moment where you should be saying, look, we're just celebrating with these families. We are glad they're home. America is strong. We are strong on the world stage. It's it's bizarre to see the rhetoric that is coming out of both Joe Biden right now and Kamala Harris. None of it seems to be positive and excited. It all seems to be very defensive. I think that's what we should expect to see through November in this campaign is a defensive pro a posture and a threatening posture. Yeah. And eight Americans, American citizens still in Gaza being held in the dungeons by Hamas there. Uh, Tudor Dixon, appreciate your insight. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you. Thank you. Bet.